What's up good people? Adam with Yackleberry and I really want to share a little bit about how I uh, decided on the kayak that I that I had and uh, the one I have currently is the Ascend H12 and um, I had actually I, I've owned three kayaks uh, just personally not counting my wife's kayak but um, I, the, the kayak I bought previous to the Ascend H12 was a Wilderness Systems um, Pungo 140 and uh, it wasn't long after I had bought the Pungo 140 that I kind of realized I bought somebody else's kayak. And what I mean by that is um, I, ver I learned after that, that that it wasn't exactly the kayak that I needed. Uh, it was the kayak that I thought I wanted but not necessarily what I needed. So anyways, what I did after I ended up uh, putting that kayak up for sale is I went ahead and um, got me a, a notebook and um, ended up writing down um, sections here. You can kind of see the different sections and uh, that helped me pick uh, the kayak I have now. Now obviously what I have now is not perfect. It doesn't do all the things um, as well as I would like them uh, to but in the bigger scheme of things when I went down this list <clears throat> when I brainstormed it was a kayak that fit into the mold um, that I needed and um, which would also turn into what I wanted once I learned um, by writing down and by brainstorming uh, once I learned what kind of kayak I needed this end age 12 uh, seemed to fit that bill and I still believe that now and in fact I've had it out several times and I really actually uh, enjoy that kayak but here's the sections uh, that I wrote down on a piece of paper and um, I kind of have them out of order uh, one of the things was why I chose this kayak meaning the ascend um, what I needed from a kayak would be the other category or the other section and uh, what I use my kayak for uh, primarily and the other section that I had is what I initially thought I wanted so what I'm going to start out with first of all is what I thought uh, that I wanted from a kayak and um, this may help somebody who hasn't uh, or is thinking about buying kayaks or uh, maybe bought one and realized it was the wrong type of kayak and maybe they're involved in watching a lot of these videos of myself and, and other great YouTubers uh, who make fantastic videos and are kayaking and a lot of times we look at what kayak they have and we think oh that's what I want because you know they're good people they make great videos we're inspired and generally we want to be um, happy kayaking like they are and so we end up um, putting that with their type of kayak and thinking that's what we need and sometimes that gets us a little bit off the track. Uh, <clears throat> so here's what it is. What I initially thought, and I'll bring it up here to the camera so you guys can see I actually wrote that down. What I initially thought I, what I marked out there, needed and I marked it out and put wanted. And the first thing was I thought I needed something with speed and a lot of speed and that's what led me to buy the Pungo. Uh, the other thing that I thought I needed, and you'll have to excuse me looking down constantly. Uh, the other thing that I thought I needed was super tracking with like a rudder or a skeg, which I didn't get that on the, um, the Pungo, but this is what I thought I initially needed. Um, I also thought I needed or wanted the ability to take, it on, take, the, to, to take the kayak over any wave uh, and cut right through them like they were nothing. Just sleek and going right through them. That's what I wanted. I wanted to be able to tackle that. Um, I thought I wanted a brand name kayak and I, I'm talking about the bigger Ascend is still a brand name but I'm talking about the bigger ones your Wilderness Systems, your Jacksons, your you know the popular ones. Um, I also thought I wanted basically what I saw most folks have which at the time that I was watching um, was uh, longer uh, slender <coughs> uh, kayaks which were nice nice kayaks whether they were old or new that seemed to be what people were wanting. Um, and also what I thought I wanted was longer. I, I believe that longer was better and I even picked that up off of somebody's uh, video and in some circumstances yes longer is better but remember this is what I'm just trying to gather uh, my thoughts down on the paper. So then um, the next category, I, so, so I wrote down what I thought I wanted initially. This is what led me to buy somebody else's kayak. Uh, so what I wanted to do was I needed to say hey what, what do I use my kayak for or what will I use the kayak for primarily and here's what I come up with uh, I would be using it for camping for fishing 
for leisure paddling and floating, like down lakes, small lakes, which I don't really go on much, and rivers. Uh, I'm not in, uh, on any coast. I'm not by any ocean. Uh, I'm not, I don't intend to go on big lakes and stuff simply because of uh, other people out there. Where the lake that I'm close to, there, it is uh, highly popular and there is a lot of boats and I just don't want to run out there with them, especially being a novice and things of that nature. So that kind of crosses off a lot. If I do go out, I tend to stay uh, along the side. So that's what I used my kayak for primarily. Camping and fishing, leisure paddling and floating down rivers and maybe sticking to the sides of the lakes. So now I've figured out what I thought I wanted. Now I've scooted over to uh, what I actually use my kayak for and that's really what helps me to hone in because I just wanted one that just nailed it all. I could go west coast, east coast, throw my kayak in the water and just take the waves like it was nothing. So then I needed to ask myself, what do I need from a kayak? What do I need from a kayak that would suit camping, fishing, uh, leisure paddling and floating rivers and staying on the side of a lake? And so here's the answers I came up with. In, in no particular order, but this is, these are, this is where I brainstormed. I needed stability, which is most important. Uh, being a novice and stuff, I didn't want to, uh, uh, I, I needed to, to grow my skills and get used to balance stuff, but I wanted something that was stable uh, up front because, uh, you know, when, when you're a novice and stuff, the first thing you don't want to do is tip over in the water. And when I started my kayaking, it was in the winter time, and I really did not want to tip over into the water. Uh, also for fishing, it's important that you have um, some a lot of stability. And the a Ascend H12, I can actually stand up in it, and I have, and I've showed that on other videos. Uh, the other thing is that I needed room to easily take any camping gear uh, that I wanted to. That, that was a must. Uh, the other thing was I wanted um, a sit-in, which uh, can be uh, argued now that the one that I have is, I mean, it's a sit-in, but your legs are wide open. My feet don't even go under anything. They're just wide open. It might as well have been um, a sit on top, but I do like sitting down in something. And for the time being, uh, and obvious, and, and I haven't built up really the confidence and stuff yet, I do like having the sides that come up uh, beside me. I do like sitting down in it like traditionally you would. And uh, I really, I really like that about the kayak, and and uh, maybe someday I'll move over to sit on top if I think that I need to. But I enjoy having the sidewalls and things of that nature. Plus, you're closer to the water. I don't know, it's a little bit more intimate to, with the water or whatever. But uh, um, I needed as much butt and back comfort as possible. Um, I knew I had to adjust to some things, um, but I, I, I think I got spoiled with my first kayak, my Ascend D10, and so I. I uh, enjoyed the fact that it was very comfortable on my rear and on my back and then when I ended up getting my pungo and stuff that was absent. Um, it's possible I could have got used to the pungo over time. Uh, my lower back and, and rear were hurting within 30 minutes and I was having a hard time. Um, <laughs> I was spoiled. So, But anyway, uh, and I also wanted something that had the ability to fish from. So those are things that I really uh, I needed uh, and one thing I don't have marked down here is something that's going to be able to hold some weight. And the Ascend H12, and I'll get to that. But anyways, I need something that's going to hold some weight um, because I needed to pack some camping gear. So here I have, I've lined up what I initially thought, initially thought I wanted. Um, I've switched on to what I need, or I'm sorry, what I use my kayak for primarily. And then I've written down uh, <clears throat> exactly um, right here what I needed from a kayak. And so then I wrote down, okay, so once I figured out what I needed from kayak, then I put the Ascend H12 against it to see if that was something that I wanted to buy. It already had a great deal on it, but I went ahead and wrote this down and would find out if it matched most of what I was wanting. Again, it was probably wasn't going to match all of it, but here's what I found about the H, uh, Ascend H12 that I uh, appreciated. The fact was it had a great ability to hold stuff, and that was part of what I needed from a kayak, something that's going to hold uh, all the camping gear I really wanted to bring. And yes, I understand that slows down a little bit, but um, it has a 450-pound rating, so I thought that was great. Um, I mean, actually, you can almost sleep in that thing. It was big enough, 12 foot. I could lay down in the middle of. I had to with a, with a pillow. You sleep out on the river, I guess, if you wanted to, if you, if, if I ever got comfortable enough to do so. Um, it had ease of access to compartments on my left side, and my right side. It has a backpack behind it. Um, uh, easy take off front cover and back cover. Just plenty of room. Easy to access all that. Um, you weren't digging through hatches and having to reach all the way up through the front stuff. And that has its own uh, pros and cons. But anyway. I uh, had sturdy construction. I knew that because of the ascent I had prior. They felt stronger. I mean, the plastic didn't roll as much. Uh, whether that's mental or not, it's still something that I 
really wanted and appreciated about the Ascend kayaks. Uh, I had the confidence in the D10 already. Uh, I already went on a camping trip for it, it held up great, and uh, that's something I carried over to the next Ascend product because um, the D10 took a beating and I was pretty confident the Ascend probably would too. Uh, the ability to use uh, in all seasons, uh, you could, it's, it's quite quite a bit open um, for winter time, you get water on you, but uh, the way that the surface is, you could easily um, put some kind of cover up around it. I mean, you're not going to be able to close yourself in, but then again, I'm not planning, wasn't planning on running uh, large boogie water type of rivers and stuff where it's going to splash in. Uh, super stability, or super stable, definitely um, stable, has a flat bottom tunnel hole design, so it's very, very stable uh, for, for when I'm getting in and out of it, or even if I have to move around, I can scoot all the way up to the front of it. Um, lean over left and right. I've even had my little daughter in there with me and never had a concern that I was ever going to uh, tip over. So that the primary uh, tippiness, if you will, was, was not there. So it was very stable feeling for me and something I appreciated about it. Uh, the setup, it's set up for fishing already. had rod holders and things of that nature and plenty of room, plenty of compartments and baggage and heck I could throw the fish in the back. I could sit a cooler there. I could sit a five gallon, whatever I needed. I could put in I don't know, five or six crates if I wanted to. Uh, and it was set up already for having a camera on it since I like to video it because it had the, the tracks on it. The, um, I forgot what they call them, but the nice tracks up front and on the sides uh, so I could mount my camera. That was great. And the price was excellent at $550. And uh, one of the big important things is I knew it was going to have comfort seating because it's the same type of seat that my D10 has. And so I knew it was going to be comfortable. So, anyways, um, I won't keep. Uh, going on about that. Um, somebody asked me one time why I picked that over sit on top but I'll save that for the next video because this one's already long um, and I didn't mean for it to be but it doesn't really matter. It's, hopefully it's good information uh, for somebody that this might be what you want to do and you might want to write that down so that way uh, you can really uh, when you go to buy a kayak you can really see if it fits uh, into what it is exactly that you're needing and not fitting into what you think you want. And I think a lot of people need to be real with themselves and find out where they're going to use that kayak primarily. Sure, it's not going to be maybe 100% of the time, but over 90% of the time, where's that kayak going to be at? And I think that'll save a lot of people from maybe buying the wrong kayak. Now, you know, just to say this, I am still very novice at this. Um, I've been kayaking for like half a year uh, now, but this is just something that I personally found uh, helped me and it helped me get my mind a little bit. Uh, uh, locked in a little bit more focused on what um, would fit me best. So anyways, um, thanks so much for watching guys. Uh, I appreciate it and uh, hopefully we'll see everyone you guys on the next video. You take care.